why do women often crown themselves as a queen? Um, I would say we've just been mistreated, like, a lot as a society. I mean, men in general really mistreat women, so I feel like it kind of just puts us up to call us ourselves a queen. Because we're independent women who don't need no men. Right? We're all women queens. are beautiful and they're bad bitches. <laughs> and they're the creators of life. Okay, well, well, actually they say women are the harborers of life because women can't conceive without a man, so... Do women well, create life or do women no, carry life? because men we can't carry, have kids They can't either. have kids either. Well, right, but I'm saying we need each other, we right? We basically carry them in our womb and let them grow yeah. inside our bodies like aliens. But it takes two people, right? It does take well, two people. We're the people. ones who carry But we do all the work we'll and they get the fun. We carry the babies of the world. Like, you think that they would show us a little more respect? God damn it. Yes, we are the prized possession. Is a woman doing the world a favor by having kids? No. The world is overpopulated. Isn't she just creating more traffic? Yes. Okay. Uh, women are special. We literally birthed the entire planet. <clears throat> like, nothing would be here without us, so. If the thing that makes women special is having kids, why do so many women choose to focus on their careers instead of becoming mothers? Um, well, actually, men are lacking in the father department, to be honest with you. I'm actually pregnant and debating what to do about it simply because of the shitty men that come up to me every few seconds. Why do women often consider themselves the creators of life? Because we foster that life. So don't women carry life? Rather than create it? Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be a good way to say it. Yes. Well, it does. It, the baby does. Like a fetus starts off as two cells. And it multiplies in the woman's body. And it's like, like the nutrition comes from the woman's body. The energy comes from the woman's body. Like all of that is from the woman. That's why I'd say that they think they're the creators. A man can repopulate an island full of women. Can a woman repopulate an island full of men? Yeah, it would just take longer. So don't men create more life? Yeah, they would create more. So then, if anyone was the creator of life, wouldn't it be men? Well, I still don't think it's either of them. It's <laughs> yeah, I think it's either of them. I, yeah. I don't think it's either, but I'm yeah. just saying if anybody was going to create more life, wouldn't it be men? Yeah, yeah, I okay. guess that makes sense, yeah. Okay. I at a faster rate, but one woman, one man would create life at the same rate. Do you think it's harder to give birth or to raise a child? Um, harder to raise a child. Giving birth is obviously extremely painful, but uh, raising a child is, you know, if you don't do a good job, that child's going to be screwed for life. Raising a child. Anybody can push out a baby, like, or get a C-section. You got to know how to take care of that child, be there for them. I could see giving birth being very hard you definitely have to carry that baby for nine months. no one's denying that. that yeah that's a lot you have to go through okay but but taking taking care of a child that's 18 years of responsibility you have to put a roof over that child's head clothe that child feed that child that's that's a lot of responsibility like so, once 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 the one woman's done birthing that child like you have to be ready for what comes with that child like there's a lot more than than just birthing that child so if the answer is parenting then why don't single dads get the same credit as single moms I don't know. I, 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 I wish they did. Uh, they're honestly just probably overlooked. There's not as many single dads as single moms. You hear about single moms everywhere. Like, I have a single mom, my boo has a single mom, my ex had a single mom. I just know so many single moms. Like, Why isn't Father's Day given as much attention as Mother's Day? Fathers are absent. That's probably why. Why is it when a father abandons his child, they call him a deadbeat dad, but when a woman aborts her child, they call it her choice? They don't. Uh, that's the rhetoric that I would like to think, but no, if they get called sluts, they get called whores, they get called murderers, when in reality, you don't know what brought them to that decision. I, I don't know a woman who has been happy about aborting a baby. I think it's mostly when they know that they will be a deadbeat. They don't have money. It's like a they, cho they choose to not have it because they don't want to be the deadbeat. Should we support a woman who aborts her child because she did what was best for herself? Yes. Why do we condemn men for abandoning their children because they did what was best for themselves? Because at that point they're abandoning a developed and birthed uh, child versus abandoning or killing a fetus. It's not a human, it's a fetus. Why is it if a woman can't pay for her baby, she gets government assistance, but if a man can't pay for his baby, he goes to jail? 
See, I never heard of that one. Getting government assistance does make sense. You have to make ends meet if you're gonna decide to have a kid. But for a father going to jail, that I don't even, is that even? Well, if he doesn't pay child support. Oh, not, well, that's his problem. He's not being active. He can just be a father and man up. Instead, he's being forced to pay child support because he's absent again. With, I think it was 60% of single mothers, um, their fathers or their baby daddies are not paying child support. Okay. So I mean, there's a lot of laws that say one thing, uh, and those laws aren't those laws aren't really enforced unless the offended party presses charges, which a lot of times that doesn't happen because of how fucked or sorry screwed up the judicial system is. Because you're a man, and this is this is it's messed up. But uh, they don't really show too much love to men. Like like I said, the court system is for the women. Uh, the world is for the women. As a man, you have to be tough and you have to be like, fuck it, you know, you gotta be like... Okay, let me ask you this. If we live in such a patriarchal society, where did all these laws come from that protect women and punish men? I don't know. That's, that's a good question, honestly, like, because it's been that way forever. Is it possible that we don't live in a patriarchy? Um, definitely, definitely. That's definitely uh, an opinionated thing. Everybody has their own opinion. I'm pretty sure the women love how it is. But um, like I was saying earlier, like I get it because you have to carry that baby and all that. But a woman could drop her baby off at an orphanage. You know what I'm saying? So I am pro-choice. Yeah. If a woman should have the right to opt out of motherhood and make that choice, should a man also have the right to opt out of fatherhood and 18 years of child support? Not if the baby is coming into the world. Unfortunately, the baby will exist at that point and need to be taken care of. Why should men be forced to be fathers if women aren't forced to be mothers? They need to learn to keep it in their pants otherwise, honestly. Well, is the man solely responsible for getting a woman pregnant or does it take two people? It definitely takes two people, but for him to walk out of their life, that's his choice. Well, for the people who say that the men should have thought of that before they had sex, isn't that the same argument that pro-lifers use against abortion? Not necessarily. Pro-lifers are doing that because they don't think a life should be taken. Um, well, I'm just saying, if you're going to say that a man should keep it in his pants, how is that different than saying a woman should just keep her legs closed? It's not really different. The difference is the woman chose to be a woman and a mother and have the baby, and the man chose to disappear and maybe pay child support or not. Well, why are we always talking about the woman's choice, but we never talk about the man's choice? Women are just more degraded than men are, unfortunately. I literally have men coming up to me telling me they want to spank me and do this and that. And I'm like, dude, this is the first time we're talking. I don't know you. Well, why are we always talking about the woman's choice but never the man's choice? Because it affects the woman's body and it doesn't affect the man's body. Okay, but doesn't a woman have the choice to opt out of having her body affected? Yeah, but it doesn't affect a man's body. Okay, but it does affect a man's future, though. Yeah, it does. Okay, so why... What reproductive rights do men have? Um, they can use protection if they're scared about having a kid. They can use abstinence if they don't want to have a kid. Okay, but can't women do all the same things as well? Yeah. So then why is, is, is the man solely responsible for getting a woman pregnant or does it take two people? No, it does take two people, but I think ultimately it is up to the woman because it's her body that it affects. Why do so many women act like it's their duty to have kids when it's actually their choice? It's not always your choice. Well, I've never said always, but isn't it usually their choice? Mm -mm. I mean, unless a woman has, you know, she unconsensual gets, sex. And no, she can have a slip up. She can get raped. It's all kind of stuff. And some women don't believe in aborting their kids either. So they just okay. go with the punches, roll with the flow and keep the baby. Don't women ultimately decide who gets sex and who gets born? Who gets sex? Yeah, but not who gets born. Well, sure they do, because women always have the option to choose whether they want to keep the child or not. Right, but as I said, some women don't believe in aborting a baby. So right, even if you're in a bad baby. situation, you still keep it. But that's still their choice. Right, and you make the right choice to not kill a life. Why do women often claim to be the creators of life when the child is wanted, but when the pregnancy is unplanned, it suddenly becomes the man's fault for not wearing a condom? I don't think, I don't think that's like a, at least in my head, I don't think that's a popular opinion. Um, I don't blame it on the men. You know, it, it does take two people to get well, right, pregnant. Right, but, but why is it then that a lot of times, you know, it'll be like, the man got me knocked up, you know what I mean? As opposed to saying that it was two people, you know? That's a great question. Get me knocked up? Um, if I had to give a controversial answer, I think that a lot of it just comes from 
like a negative disposition towards men that like most women tend to have like for survival we have negative dispositions towards men can you elaborate more on that what do you mean towards survival um so you know it's like it's really dangerous to be a woman like, every woman has a taser every woman has pepper spray like you know first dates are scary my friend needs my location because the worst thing that can happen is that i get sexually assaulted and murdered but you know the worst thing that could happen for a man on a first date is that it just goes wrong yeah you get rejected not saying that none of that can happen right but it's, but it's less it's common bad. And so I think that whenever there's a negative situation and it involves a man, like the, dis the disposition that a woman is going to have is going to be negative towards the man. So at what point does that kind of become like just, you know, abuse or man-hating? <laughs> That's also a good question. I feel like if it's something that you're being like intentionally hateful, if you're intentionally trying to hurt someone, or if you're being intentionally androgynous, then that's whenever it like crosses the line. Yeah, if you're not trying to have a debate or a conversation, at least by some sort of facts, and you're just bringing in your full opinion, um, in a sense of like using insults, that's when it can be man hating, and especially and vice versa from women hating. If a man can impregnate multiple women a day. Why would women consider themselves the creators of life? I guess because in the end, they're the only ones who can bring about life. Um, well, a man can repopulate an island full of women. Can a woman repopulate an island full of men? No. <laughs> so don't men create more life? They do, unless the woman has a choice to end it. True. Okay. What is a surrogate? Somebody who has somebody else's child. I've read that scientists are developing an artificial womb to grow babies. If you had the option to become a mother without ever having to physically carry the child or go through the pain of childbirth, would you choose to do so? Yes. Is that not adoption? Why? I would do it. Why? Uh, first of all, what if you pick the wrong person to have a child with in the first place? <laughs> that would be my fear. No. Um, childbirth can be traumatizing for a lot of people. It is, it can be dangerous, especially if you don't have the right health care. So why would you want to put yourself through that if you know there's a safer option? So if artificial surrogates became commonplace, would that diminish women's role? No, because they would still need. Well, in other words, if women and men were reduced to egg and sperm donors, would that make women no longer special? No, because you still need an egg and a sperm. Well, right, but I mean, would that make women any more special than it would make a man? Because they're both basically donating DNA. No, they, uh, yeah, women, yeah, women would be no longer the, the they would no longer be the ones carrying a child. See, the way society is set up, though, it's still it would still be put on the women because men are viewed higher in society. I think a lot of women would still choose to have the babies themselves to feel closer. So, probably not. Okay. If women and men were reduced to egg and sperm donors, would that make women no longer special? I guess if only you did that and nobody had children, then yeah, I guess. Why is society engineering women out of the equation? I have no idea. <laughs> I think there just might be more either efficient or easier ways to do stuff. I mean, childbirth before modern medicine, like the mortality rate was pretty high. So like, if you take kind of that factor away, it's safer for like both mother and child. Let me ask, mm, let me ask you a question. If men can impregnate several women a day, but women can only get pregnant once every nine months maximum, why does the birth control fall to be the woman's responsibility? That's a good point, but my question is, why are there more birth control options for women than there are for men? If we're talking about hormonal, there's the pill, there's the Nuva ring, there's an IUD, there's the implant. Oh, the IUD has a copper or hormonal option, so it's both. Um, we can also use barrier methods like a condom, a female com condom, a dental dam, but that's right now only for oral, but it can be changed. Um, abstinence is technically a form of birth control as well. It's pulling out a form. Technically. Technically, pulling out as a form is a really low, low, yeah. low success rate. Um, what about for men? Condoms. There's barrier can, methods for men, and, and then, um, they they have been trying to. There's vasectomies. They have been trying to develop hormonal options for men, but they're like 
The side effects are apparently too much for men to handle. Why are there more forms of birth control for women than men? Because it was always placed on the women to control. It was okay for a man to sleep with women, but it was not okay for a woman to sleep with a man. So they're like, you got to control it. It's easier for a man to get a vasectomy because he can get it reversed. And um, cheaper. But a woman has to go through hoops and, and fire to be able to have birth control or to get a hysterectomy. And even then, like the birth control itself, it's, it's like really bad for yeah. us and it causes us a lot of problems like physically and mentally. Why is there more birth control options for women than there is for men? I think there just hasn't been a lot of research done through it, to be completely honest with you. I think a lot of it has to do with it just... That's how it is and so that's how it stays. And like I think that a lot of men are unwilling to do something for birth control because... Don't you think that if there was a birth control pill for men, men would be all over that? I would hope so. I if it gave the same effects, then you could be like, okay, hey, yeah, I I've it definitely. I've heard a lot of men talk about like birth control pills for men, and they often say things like, "Well, I don't want to put like you know hormones in my body, or like I don't want it to change my body," but then don't understand that the birth control that we take does the same thing. Yeah. Why are women the stronger sex when it comes to birthing children, but conveniently the weaker sex when it comes to risking rejection, needing sympathy and validation, killing spiders, opening jars, lifting heavy objects, and fighting wars? Just because, like I said, we're, it's men and women, masculine and feminine, okay? Ask yourself this, would you like a masculine-ass woman? I, it turns me on when my girl asks me to kill the spider or open the jar, like, it makes me feel like a man. Some of them don't even need it. They just do it to, to boost our egos. Men are very egotistical. You know what I'm saying? It, it works together when you fight, find the right woman, 100%.